Here it is, the Solarola E-Star. It is by far the most powerful solar electric vehicle that you can buy. It's a camper. There's just nothing else like it right now. The Napkin, the birthplace of many creative ideas. Computer-aided design is the ultimate napkin. The Solarola Napkin series will discuss the engineering behind projects in various levels of completion. From concept sketches to current builds, projects already delivered to clients, and even off-grid projects on the Solarola property. Welcome to the Napkin series. The Navistar E-Star one of the first electric delivery vans. The Navistar E-Star was a, uh, a partnership between International and Modec of the United Kingdom. So International trucks have been building larger trucks for years, um, semis, they build you know these pretty heavy duty vehicles. And they combined their Navistar division of their company with Modec to create the E-Star. Um, it was only made for two years, 2010 and 2011 or 2011 and 2012. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But they just made them for two years and they had a lot of problems. They had a lot of um, BMS issues, shutting down. Um, I did have one of these original E-Stars. So I just like the way they look. When I first saw this vehicle, it was actually in a garage sale portion of Thunderstruck Motors um, website, when I first saw this vehicle, I kind of fell in love. And I certainly didn't fall in love with the mechanics or the electronics of the vehicle, but I like the shape. And to me, it's what's really to come, which is a nice big windshield, a larger vehicle, but not too large, a little bit bigger than a Sprinter, a little bit more room inside, a little higher, a little higher roof than a Sprinter. It just spoke to me as the perfect um, solar-powered electric vehicle. So as you know, we started with smaller vehicles like uh, the VW buses. But as my family grew, I realized I needed a larger vehicle. So as I said, when I saw this vehicle on the Thunderstruck Motors website, I had to have it. And I bought it. And I drove it at that point from Santa Rosa, California, up to Ashland, Oregon, where we had our shop at the time. And... It was a wonderful vehicle. So the intention there was to get some solar on it, and I did put some solar up top, but before I actually got the solar hooked up, Joel Gregory Hayes of Root Del Sol came along. And Joel wanted to do a full-on solar-powered vehicle and travel from Alaska to Argentina quite a bit to bite off there, but I was game. We were really excited. I think we only talked a few times before we were ordering panels from China and getting parts together. Joel came and he lived with us and we built much of this E-Star in our front yard. We had neighbors, of course, who had to deal with um, chop saws cutting aluminum, but everybody was very supportive. It was also a time when the wildfires were running rampant in Oregon and it was smoky. Half the time we couldn't breathe very well, but we were really passionate about getting this vehicle done for Joel. We only spent, I think, two months building that vehicle, so it was a real push. Um, it wasn't a vehicle that we made money on. We just kind of did it as a labor of love and really just wanted to get Joel on the road and let that determine um, the course of our business as that's when our business started. That's when we really put Solarola together. So the Route del Sol vehicle was pretty awesome. It wasn't E-Star. However, we did maintain the E-Star components. We put a solar top on there, about 7,900 watts of solar, I think Joel um, took off with. And we put a 40 kilowatt hour pack. We built it on our kitchen table. Um, Kira and I in Ashland and put that in the rear so the panels charged the batteries and then from the batteries through some outback inverters we were able to charge the vehicle. So that's kind of the, the one easy way to build a solar powered vehicle is to take an existing EV 
and just put kind of a house battery in it. Charge that house battery and then literally just plug your vehicle into that. So that's what we did with the, with the uh, Route del Sol vehicle. And that vehicle was amazing. In fact, at the Smith River, Joel and I pulled 60 kilowatt hours of, of uh, solar power. So that was, that's a solid 100 miles in an E-Star. Now you're going slow. That isn't the day that you're necessarily climbing, but that's going to be your best, which was, was pretty cool to see. There's a lot of companies out there talking about the potentials and, you know, get up to this and do this and do that. But we actually, when we put figures out like that, we have testing behind it. One thing I'm really proud of with Solarola is that as a result of us being the first to really develop these vehicles and get them out there in the world, um, we know the numbers. We know based on weight and based on real world situations, what you're going to get. So when we tell you, hey, you're going to get this, this is about what you're going to get. So Joel headed up to Alaska, got going, and then as he came back down south, we, he came back through the shop and we added actuators so that Joel could actually tip that array up into the sun. And to do that, we had to basically pull, I think, some five bolts, six bolts out of one side of the array, and then it hinged on the bolts on the other side of the, the array. So basically, you would put your actuators up there, pull the bolts, and then tip your panels. Well, unfortunately, down in uh, Mexico, which is as far as Joel made it, he did some tracking, but when he dropped that array back down, he didn't put the bolts back in. So when he started traveling, and at that point, he saw some pretty serious wind, um, without those bolts, it flipped the, the array right off. You got to consider the wind. And so what we like to be able to do is, you know, put our, put our vehicles in the sun and go hiking or go swimming. So we don't want to have to worry about a wind coming up or anything like that. So the next E-Star after, after the Route del Sol project was Redfoo's E-Star. So Redfoo's E-Star started out me building an E-Star for myself, kind of like with the, with the Route del Sol situation. And it becomes kind of a a model for our company. Kira and I decide what the ultimate would be for us and our family. We start building it. Someone else tunes in and they, they want it. We're happy to, to build it for them and support them getting it out there in the world and cruising it around. So we started building what I considered the ultimate, which was tearing out the batteries, tearing out all the electronics of the Navistar E-Star, just maintaining that cool looking vehicle but that's pretty much it. Everything else we built ourselves. So the battery pack was our design. Um, you'll see that if you look at some of the videos of the build, um, the solar panel, everything. We did everything. We basically just used the E-Star as a shell. And part of the reason that I really wanted to um, go that extra mile with the E-Stars is because, you know, partial um, English parts, partial international parts. We just really wanted a, a vehicle that was incredibly reliable. And I think that's kind of the, the motto of our company, this, this freedom vibe. You don't get freedom if you don't have reliable components that can be easily found as you're, as you're needing them. So I put a, a GM 14 volt rear axle in there. We used a UQM uh, Power Phase 220 motor in that rig, which is a pretty common motor. A Torque Trends two to one gearbox, and as I mentioned, our own battery pack, which consisted of 12 Tesla Model 3 modules. So those are the 20, 2170 cells, right around 200 kilowatt hours. I saw about 150 usable kilowatt hours in that pack. So what we were seeing was right around 1,000 watt hours per mile. So 150 to 180 miles of range there, lots of different tweaks. To get that vehicle up over 200 miles and Red Foo and I are still doing some stuff on it which is pretty typical with our company we stay involved with the vehicles we want to continue to do support and that's a really important thing you know I have a Tesla Model Y and I absolutely love the car and I charge it off my solar system um, every day pretty much but when I have a problem and I have had problems it's been a battle it's been a battle to even get someone to seriously talk to us and then finally actually get someone to lift a finger. Yeah, can be intense. 
And that's something that makes it hard to feel like there's ultimate freedom if you're dependent on someone that doesn't get back to you or, you know, obviously doesn't want to throw out the cash to fix the vehicle. So we are right there working with, you know, all of our clients on, on their vehicles, trying to keep them on the road and trying to get keep this dream alive and keep this freedom vibe going. So the E-Star, as I mentioned, it's a perfect size vehicle. It's big so that you have the room inside to feel um, free and have a nice kitchen, have a nice bed, the things you need, but also small enough so that you could roll into San Francisco and park it somewhere on the street. So that's kind of the balance, and I think that's why we've kind of stuck with this E-Star design. We are, we are still considering uh, more E-Star builds now that we've um, torn it all down and gone through it. We like to think that we're experts on the vehicle, and we know the ins and outs of all the components that we're using. So pretty excited to just kind of do the same thing again for once. As a custom shop, a lot of times we get involved in always the next thing, the next thing. But it's really nice to just do something twice um, so that you can just keep improving it each time. So that's uh, what, we're, what we're offering at this point with our E-Stars is kind of the Red Foo model. And that model being something that we can reproduce. We did do some exchanging of parts along the way. We did 2,500 miles from uh, here in Wisconsin where our shop is to Malibu where Red Foo is at. So we learned a ton about the vehicle, what works, what doesn't work. We had to replace things. We rolled through 15 below. So we saw the vehicle in pretty much every situation, climbing mountains, up and down. So we were really able to put out something awesome for Red Foo. And the panels we used were light leaf um, panels. Those panels were very light. However, we did need to use a frame because solar panels, you know, it's all about surface area if you want to get power. And surface area with wind is, it's a thing. Just as with a normal RV and RV awnings, you have to consider your wind situations. Of course, you do as well with the Solarola vehicles. So if we have to add, you know, 100 pounds or even 50 pounds of, you know, rigging to make sure that when we stop, we can put these panels out, um, solidly and you know even in um, wind that's what we that's what we can we can afford to do on a larger vehicle because it's just a smaller percentage of the overall weight so when you look across the board and you see people building solar powered electric vehicles you'll notice some similarities to um, first the red foo top which was drawer slides and then also the red foo top um, the uh, E-Star top, which was um, kind of rollers and tracks. We're very happy that they're doing that. We're supporting that they're doing that because what we really ultimately want is everybody having the opportunity to cruise on sunshine and have a little tiny home power station because of all the joy that we've had with them and the joy that people we've built them for have had. So we're excited to, to just stay in that positive energy of people being really happy to um, travel freely and, and efficiently and sustainably around the U.S. and around the world. So we are starting another E-Star right now. This E-Star, of course, just like all of our other vehicles, <laughs> our visions of what we would want to have ultimately. And the truth of the matter is, we're there. There's enough solar power on there for you to travel comfortably. There's enough solar power on there for you to camp as long as most people would want to camp and go then after that as far as most people would want to go. The vehicle that we built for Red Foos was just under 200 miles and as I mentioned a couple tweaks will be over 200 miles and so there as far as I'm concerned as far as my needs as far as the needs of a lot of people that I know that um, do RV traveling we're there. There's not that much more development that needs to happen. So as we build our next E-Star, we're going to focus more on space. So we're considering popping the top up a full six foot for a second story. We're considering pop-outs. We're considering stuff um, more about space just to have the luxury of even more space folding into a vehicle that's, you know, not super big and really kind of convenient to drive and fun to drive. 
So that's kind of where we're focusing now. Another thing that we're considering is four wheel drive. So we just pulled in, and this will be the source of another napkin series, so a little teaser for you. We just pulled in a military grade four by four electric drivetrain. And I can't tell you how excited I am about that. It already has the motors mounted right on the axles, so it saves me a lot of work. It's all crazy heavy duty, and um, the frame is actually adjustable. So I could possibly put an E-Star on top. We are currently um, pulling in an E-Star. We have a little cleaning to do, and we're going to be pulling this E-Star into the shop. Um, we've already done the battery box as far as um, making it uh, uh, um, ready for the batteries. So it's already prepped for the batteries. We've already got our AEM display for it. Um, and lots of our components. So pretty excited to get going on that E-Star. We're not sure yet whether we're gonna do the four x four or not. So that has a lot to do with uh, um, who comes in and, and wants the vehicle. Some people don't care so much about that. Me personally, I don't really wanna do off-roading, <laughs> but four x four is nice, especially when the axles are already equipped with the motors on them. It's kind of like, well, if it's that easy, why not? However, uh, that does add a little bit of expense, so if someone wanted to keep the expense down, maybe they would opt for just the two-wheel drive version. But we are going to be, um, Kira was pretty uh, much the, the, the front person on that AEM display, so she'll be starting to look at putting the display in this next E-Star, and I'm going to be really working on batteries. So what we're excited to do is use, use the BYD batteries now we have a source of those batteries. Um, if you were to look up the BYD blade um, cells, you'd see some incredible figures. There's no thermal runaway issues. There is just incredible lifetime. They take a beating, these batteries, and don't have any problems. So pretty excited to consider these batteries in our next build. And like I said, just making it even more a comfortable space. But the solar power is there, people. And the battery technology, it's here. It's all here for us to really start cruising these vehicles, living in these vehicles, using them as office spaces, as art studios. Um, the list goes on. Maybe you just park it by your house and, and you keep your house powered up all year. And then for a few months, you take it and you vacation. Like I said, the, the list goes on how you could enjoy these vehicles. So we are headed for the shop to get it on.